happy February. It's so chilly this week. So we hope that you're having a great week and um, you enjoy our town hall today. There's some really great discussions on the master plan, the charitable giving, and some of the great things that Jeannie is working on with some of our other partners here at French Village of Dublin. And we're super excited about that. Um, and then obviously our associate of the month. So I did want to say that hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to have some town halls in a room. Um, but we, in the, sh in the short term, we're going to continue to do them virtually, but we know how much you want to be in the room and how much we want to be in the room with you. So we're working on that and we'll hopefully be able to communicate maybe in the near future, but we'll be in touch. Enjoy the show. All right, hey everyone. Um, your monthly construction update for this month includes mostly the 2.2 healthcare center, the Meadows, um, but we've also been working away to schedule some upcoming work that you'll notice around campus that we wanna make sure we talk about. Um, so first of all, there is a small section of carpet in the Clubhouse A hallway corridor on the ground floor that we will be replacing starting Monday the 22nd um, and completing around Wednesday the 24th. We will also be working on the Muirfield Room balcony. So if you've noticed, we've had some temporary balcony railings up there for the last few months. We will be replacing that railing, we will be um, cleaning off all the pavers and resetting the pavers and doing some paint touch-ups out there. So that work is scheduled to start on March 1st and to complete on or around March 18th. Outside of that, we've been working away on the new healthcare center um, and we have some pictures to show you. So this first picture is of the third floor resident, room, resident floor hallway. We have patched drywall and are getting ready to paint in that hallway. And the next few pictures are just kind of of the hallways and common areas. This is on the third floor in the new dining room surgery area. Um, so we have completed all of our in-wall plumbing and electrical and started hanging drywall in that area, which is what you're looking at here. This picture is just right behind where I was standing in the last picture looking back into a small private dining area, finishing some electrical work, and we have started hanging drywall on the walls, and we'll start hanging drywall on the ceilings and soffits here shortly. In the back of this picture, you can see in the, through the doorway in the back is the actual servery itself. Um, so drywall is going up in there as well. And then these are a few rooms of, or a few pictures of typical resident room status right now. So we've prime painted all resident rooms and have started hanging the crown molding around the ceiling, which is what you're seeing here. Um, you also see some wires hanging out of the holes in the ceiling for future light fixtures, which will be going in shortly. Another big update, we've started some finish works in the resident rooms. So um, we've started installing casework on the third floor, which is what you're looking at here on the left side of the picture. And we have started tile in the resident room restroom. So floor tile is in on almost all of the third floor resident room restrooms at this point, and we're working our way down to the second floor. Um, so the second floor is lagging the third floor by about a week at this point, which is um, right on schedule. Hello everyone. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we wanted to share just what's going on with sales and marketing today with you. So first of all, uh, January, we had one person move in. I'm sure everyone has had a chance to meet Molly Dunce. Um, she is our most recent move in and uh, our newest resident. So if you haven't had a chance to meet her, definitely reach out to her and uh, say hello and introduce yourself. Um, our next move in is scheduled for March with several more to follow. We've got many more to follow. So we are we've been doing a lot of work, um, sending out a lot of information. Um, Lee has been working on some mailers. We've got webinars happening. So there's a lot of activity that we have found more and more people 
are interested in wanting to talk and, and see the community. And we are anxious to, to get that started um, and see that happening here moving forward into this year. So um, one of the things that I wanted to, to just remind everybody, and several have been reaching out to me and Neil specifically about this, is our referral program. Um, as you recall, we launched a new referral program that basically stated if you refer some to, someone to us and they deposit and then they move in by the end of June, that you would get a full month credit. So your monthly fee would be credited back to you. All you got to do is refer someone. Of course, they got to move in. And they have to move in by June. So we've had several folks come and uh, give us some information, refer those friends. We've been reaching out to them and working through that process as well. Um, so thank you guys, continue to do that, and we'll take them all. We gotta fill the community up for sure. So Lee? So I'm sure you have some friends out there that are sick and tired of shoveling snow <laughs> and this cold weather and being stuck in the house. So don't forget, you know, we have a great grounds crew, keeps, us, keeps this place clean and we don't have to shovel snow. So that's a great thing to remind people. As Kevin said, we've been doing lots of events lately. Um, our events look different than they used to. Uh, we were doing webinars now. We've done some really great webinars in the last couple of months. We're focusing on the Village Way and the Nine Dimensions of Wellness, which I'm sure you'll hear from Jeannie talking about those. And so every month we're kind of focusing on a different dimension. Last, last month was our health services, and this month we're gonna be talking about nutrition. Um, so, and those are great ways to introduce our prospects into life here and all the different ways that we have to make life vibrant here at Friendship Village. So um, if you see any of those coming up on Facebook or other places, you know, please feel free to ask us about them and invite your friends to join us on Zoom. Awesome. Yeah. And, and again, feel free to stop by down in sales and marketing. We're down in B102. We would love to chat with you. We really would love to find out who your friends are so we can reach out to them too. So thank you guys and look forward to seeing everyone soon. Hello, Craig Flickinger, Director of Finance here. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the tax letter you just received. Uh, I think I have an example here that's dated February 10th. I believe they were all dated February 10th and you've likely received them in the mail in the last week to 10 days. Um, but this is an annual letter for those of you that are new to Friendship Village. This is an annual letter you'll receive every February from us and allows you to deduct, to deduct a percentage of both your monthly fee and then again, if you moved in during last year, your entrance fee. Your entrance fee deductibility is only in year one. Uh, we have had people historically try to spread that out over the life expectancy. Please don't do that. That is not past audit. Um, so don't try to do that. Um, but in terms of this percentage fee, this was a letter you'll get every year. Um, I have had a couple of questions already this year. What does CCRC stand for? Because it talks about the very top line, deductibility for CCRC. That's the acronym for, the, for where we live. It's called a Continuing Care Retirement Community. Uh, that actually in the last couple years has been changed to call, be called life plan communities. So you may hear either one of those terms kind of used interchangeably uh, depending on the, the, really the age of the person talking to you. Folks like me who've been around a while, we may still, still call it a CCRC. Uh, but again, the, the newer words is life plan community. Really it's on page two of this letter as we get to about the middle of page two and then down towards the bottom that I want to spend the time talking to you today. So it gives you a 27.64% or $885 per person. So again, if you're a single person, you would take your monthly fee times that 27.64 and compare it to the 885. You can take whichever number is greater. I believe about $3,200 is your break even point to 885. So if you're in an apartment where you're paying more than $3,200, it's gonna be likely that you would take the 27.64% and then use your current monthly fee that you're actually paying. If you're in one of our smaller apartments that are, and you're paying less than about $3,200 a month, then you're probably gonna wanna use the 885 because you can use the greater of whatever that calculation turns out to be. Second person fees are the same way. Again, we have had folks historically who have taken 100% of their second person fee and that has passed audit, but from a legal tax standpoint, 
from this letter that, that we get from LCS that we're not able to change, we're able to say 27.64 is absolutely deductible. If you want to get with your accountant and feel that because the second person is primarily paying for meals uh, and want to take 100% of that, we have had that work, but we're not able to give you that and say that's the advice you would get from Friendship Village. At the bottom of the page then it talks about entrance fees. So now I'm primarily talking to those of you, or I really am only talking to those of you that moved in last year. So that during calendar year 2020, uh, you're able to also deduct 27.64 of the entrance fees stated at the bottom there. But again, only our one bedroom. The IRS deems anything beyond a one bedroom to be at your luxury, not at medical necessity. And since this letter speaks to the medical deductibility of your entrance fee and your monthly fee, if you've uh, purchased one of our larger units or a two bedroom unit and paid more than the 134 or the 214 for the return of capital, the IRS deems that to be at your luxury, so you're gonna be limited to the 27.64 of the numbers quoted on this page. And again, second fee would apply the same way. We've had folks who've been successful in taking 100%, but the advice that's in the letter would be to take just the 27.64% of your fees. Let me also explain how that 27.64% is calculated. Uh, historically here, it's been 30 to 35% if you've lived here long enough. I think my first year here was 36%, but that's all based on Friendship Village's actual cost, uh, actual expense in our licensed care area. So our assisted living in our health center, basically on the top line, divided by total Friendship Village expenses on the bottom line. So again, last year in February, we opened Waterford, but what opening Waterford did was we moved 46 beds in our meadows, which was our current assisted living prior to that, down to 29 beds in our Waterford unit. So our assisted living uh, didn't quite drop in half, but close. And again, expenses, while they didn't quite drop in half, at least from a direct care standpoint, with taking care of 29 instead of 45 or 46, we spent fewer dollars in our assisted living and will spend fewer dollars until such point here in about, what, 12 or 14 months or so from now, or maybe 16 or 18 months from now, we open that memory care unit, which again will add to our licensed care expenditures because we're putting 27 more beds into service. Uh, so at that point, our expenditure will go up. Really last year, Friendship Village's spending was relatively flat, but the piece of the pie that was licensed care shrunk. So the example I would use is, in the prior year, we had 300,000 of licensed care spending on a million of overall expenses. That's 30%. Essentially, that million of overall expenses stayed the same, but our licensed care, our top line, shrunk to essentially 270,000. So now our medical spending is only 27% of our total cost. And again, that's why you see it fluctuate year over year, because it is our actual spending as we send to the federal government on our Medicare cost report, which is the end of our fiscal year. So our June of 2020 numbers, which we transmitted to the government in the fall of 2020, is what sets this rate letter, this tax letter. And then when we, uh, upcoming here in June of 2021, we'll transmit that to the government here in the fall. And then the, our tax letter will come out early next year, early calendar, calendar 22 for our 2021 deductibility. Uh, I really would expect it to say relatively the same because, again, we're taking care of those same folks. The only interesting thing this year is because of COVID, we have spent a lot in personal protective equipment and other supplies, in particular in licensed care, probably disproportionately in licensed care. So that may raise our medical spending a little bit this coming year, uh, again, just because we have spent a lot in the COVID area as it relates to, to medical. So. Just wanted to provide that explanation. There's always a question, well, how do you get to that number? How come you can't tell me that number in advance? I really can just kind of give you a broad brush range. And now that it's down to 27, I would say next year is going to be in that 27 to 35 or 25 to 35 if you want to take a broad brush, just because I'm not sure what the COVID PPE spending might do to our overall uh, medical spending. If you have additional questions, uh, I'm kind of the person that can be the, be the point man for you on that. I get a, probably a half a dozen or so calls a year uh, from accountants around the area who are doing folks' taxes because this is a kind of a unique situation. So if they've not had someone that they're doing taxes live in, in one of these types of communities, they may never, never have seen a letter like this. 
and may not trust it, feel free to give them my name and number and have them give me a call. If you have additional questions also, uh, feel free to email or, or call me. I'd be glad to try to help walk you through it. Uh, and that's all. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Betsy Gillespie, Charitable Giving Director here at Friendship Village of Dublin, and excited to share with you a quick update about our 2021 scholarship program. We'll be offering scholarships for the 21st year this year, and it's thanks to generous support from our donors. Our donors have been especially generous this year, and so our scholarship program is going to be able to offer even more scholarships for 2021. So be sure to let folks know that the applications are available now. Applications are available through our Human Resources Department, and they will be due on March 12th. So if you know an associate or the dependent of an associate who has been in good standing for the last 12 months as of March 12th, please encourage them to get an application from Human Resources and turn that in by March 12th. We're so excited and so grateful for your support of this important program. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Jeannie Joseph, Director of Wellness and Community Life, here to announce a future initiative and an exciting new partnership coming your way. But before uh, we get into that, I want to talk briefly about the reopening of programming in wellness and community life. We are now back to somewhat normal with our cards and games. So poker, euchre, bridge, uh, mahjong, scrabble, hand and foot, billiards, uh, those can all be um, signed up in the cards and game notebook in the front lobby. JC has resumed uh, laugh out language out loud and trivia in the Muirfield room. Art classes are back with Ann Vega, Jean Schwimba, and Jim Glover. The art gallery is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Featured is uh, Laura Hill's beautiful stained glass, so take an opportunity to go down and visit the art gallery. The Muirfield Room can now house 30 people for music programs, presentations, and sit and be fit. And in celebration of our quarterly theme, The Music of Our Lives, Johnny Steiner will be offer, offering a five-week lifelong learning course in March titled, I Sing Because I'm Happy, Finding Your Voice in the Great American Songbook. Uh, Sign-ups for that will be in the book shortly. Ashrun Fitness and Brandywine Fitness classes have resumed. Sign-ups are required, but I do have some good news. Beginning March 1st, you will no longer need to sign up for workouts in the gym or for free swim. Um, in Brandywine or Ash Run. The annual health and wellness fair has been going on this week. I hope you've had an opportunity to take advantage of the screenings and services provided. Church services are once again offered in the MR as well as virtual. Bus rides to Kroger and Meyer have resumed and we are looking forward to offering scenic rides beginning March 1st. Committees are meeting in person and needleworkers have resumed the good work that they do. Virtual coffee and happy hours are continuing at this time as well. We are getting so close to being normal again. It was so fun seeing all of you in the dining room, eating pizza and socializing with your friends and neighbors. I don't know about you, but I am ready for a big celebration. Stay tuned. Most of you are familiar with the the uh, Village Way. For those residents that are new to the community, the Village Way provides a framework for our nine dimensions of wellness. The nine dimensions of wellness are used to develop our programming, providing a whole person approach to wellness. The, the Village Way, though, is more than just a wellness program. It's a lifestyle that we have created throughout the continuum to provide you with the best possible outcome in terms of quality of life. Our goal is to create a culture of vitality and wellness for our staff and residents through programming, education, and support. In the next couple of months, you will see a community-wide initiative that will focus on each dimension of wellness throughout the next fiscal year. Together, we can strengthen our commitment to wellness and reap the benefits of a community dedicated to this way of life. Lastly today, it's my pleasure to bring forward Larry Danner, Director of Physical Therapy. 
Larry and I are super excited to announce a new partnership called Partners in Motion. Partners in Motion is designed to help you transition through the continuum of your health and wellness journey. It's a partnership between physical therapy, wellness, and you, the resident, for long-term success in achieving your goals. Hi, uh, thanks Jeannie uh, for the introduction. Uh, as Jeannie mentioned, my name is Larry Danner. I'm the program director of the therapy department here at Friendship Village. Um, so ultimately what's gonna happen is uh, if and when you receive therapy services with us and once you reach uh, the end of your therapy services or your plan of care, we will then uh, make a recommendation or referral to the wellness program in Jeannie's team and we will have either Jill or Mikey uh, attend your last few sessions of therapy to see the progress that you've made, what you've been working on. Um, this is ultimately going to allow us to create a more optimal program for you moving forward once you're done with therapy. Um, again, the, the purpose of the wellness program is to uh, make sure that you're completing that continuum of care and you continue to build on what you've gained in therapy or what you've learned in therapy instead of just doing therapy and then just ending and then you're not doing anything. So, you know, we, we've been doing this for a little while, um, but we did feel that it was necessary to create an actual platform um, of the wellness program to, you know, not only promote it, but to educate and allow us to monitor your progress through that, again, continuum of care of receiving therapy and um, then moving on to the wellness program. I wanted to just explain a little bit of the types of therapy that we do provide here at Friendship Village of Dublin. We have three disciplines of therapy. We have occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech therapy. Um, what does that exactly mean? So the occupational therapy, uh, without giving you a full run on uh, definition of what we do, uh, the occupational therapy tends to focus more on your function. So you being able to get yourself dressed in the morning, get yourself in and out of the shower, make sure you're able to, you know, do the things that you do every, every day by yourself. Um, are you having any trouble getting in and out of the shower? Do, do we need to recommend maybe a shower seat to make it a little bit easier for you and or independent? Um, the physical therapy tends to focus more on your mobility. So physical therapy focuses on walking, uh, balance, your leg strength. Um, are you using a walker? Are you using a cane? What kind of adaptive device do we de um, need to recommend to assure that you're independent and safe? Um, and then lastly, the speech therapy um, focuses on um, not only communication, if you're having difficulty um, with your speech or your communication. Um, if you're having trouble swallowing, um, there are so many different reasons why, um, but if you are having trouble swallowing, the speech therapy can, can work on those things for you, um, as well as if you are noticing that you're forgetting things, maybe your memory isn't as good as it used to be. Um, if you're you know, having some confusion every now and then, the speech therapy focuses on those uh, cognitive skills. So um, I would like to just uh, kind of wrap this up and um, just reach out and say thank you for Jeannie and her team uh, for, for developing these, these programs, uh, the wellness program and the Partners in Motion. Uh, we are looking forward to kind of getting back on track as Jeannie mentioned earlier. Um, we know that COVID's kind of put a lot of restrictions on us, but we're excited to get back to all this. Uh, thank you and have a good day. Well, hello, it's Jessica Reeker. I'm the Health Services Administrator. So glad to join you here in February with a lot of snow. We were hoping that Buckeye Chuck was going to prevail uh, and we would not have this continuation of winter, but it looks like Punxsutawney Phil was correct. So uh, we got a lot of snow today. And of course, it's our first day of indoor visitation, the resumption of our long time <laughs> practice. It feels like we haven't visited with loved ones for so long, but 
We're excited and I'll cover that uh, in my brief update today from the Health Center and Assisted Living, the Waterford Place. So let's start with the Health Center. Um, our COVID isolation unit thankfully closed um, and we're hoping on a permanent basis. We hope that book of business is gone, done, over with. Um, that ended in the middle of January and we permanently have transitioned to an observation unit. We have begun to take admissions again in the health center and so we have a designated area where those that newly admit to the health center go for observation for a 14 day period of some heightened monitoring measures. So it's a very exciting time. We have not had an active COVID case in the health center since January 4th for our resident population and the 18th for our associate population of January. So February has been a very clean month so far and I'll knock on some wood as I say that. Um, our Franklin County positivity rate continues to lower. Also very exciting news. So um, continue to wear that mask, social distance and wash your hands. We're all uh, expected to do our part to help to keep those rates lowering. Uh, we'd like to get below the 5% mark, but we know as the uh, licensed area on the campus, the health center being our most highly regulated area, we have to stay below 10% to continue to welcome the practice of indoor visitation. Anything above 10% prevents us altogether from inviting loved ones in. So please help do your part by hand washing, social distancing and wearing your mask. Um, and then what's really next for the health center? Well, we're working just as hard as other areas on our campus for our reopening strategies. Uh, we're working alongside the culinary uh, team to help get some small dining groups back into motion. I know uh, in independent living, we've invited back some practices by opening uh, dining venues and we're very excited to get there soon in our health center and our Waterford place. So um, that's something that is in the works and I hope that in the coming weeks, I'll be able to announce that resumption of service as well. In terms of a regulatory update, um, so many moving pieces and parts with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, we are actively uh, continuing to monitor the guidance that comes from that agency, that alongside of the Ohio Department of Health and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid really do dictate in the Health Center in the Waterford Place how we resume and reopen and what those strategies look like in terms of timing. Um, and a good example is our visitation. So just a reminder, even though guidance has changed in the way of quarantine, and, and for the general public, if you've been vaccinated and there's three criteria for that vaccination, you gotta be within three months of your second dose, you can't be symptomatic, um, but you really have to check off some boxes there. And even so, it doesn't apply for our health care workers. So it's really just a general public provision and guidance from the CDC. So our healthcare workers, if there's a suspected or known exposure, or they're traveling to a what we call a red state, so an area of high positivity, they are still required to quarantine per Friendship Village of Dublin uh, policy right now. And those practices and policies we're always reviewing as a group in our COVID task force that is comprised of the interdisciplinary team across our campus, all levels of care. Uh, we will continue to actively monitor that guidance. And when it does apply to healthcare workers and those that are engaging in our congregate setting here um, at Friendship Village, we'll make those changes and announce those appropriately. Um, also, I just want to remind everyone that our visitor restriction, although again, we're seeing uh, vaccination rates increase in the external and our internal community, we've been blessed to have our vaccination clinics and many of us have reached our immunity dates. However, we are still mandated by the Ohio Department of Health, both the Waterford Place and the Health Center um, to not allow visitors in outside of our supervised indoor visitation and end of life compassionate care visits. So I, I can definitely help you understand uh, that guidance and those restrictions per those regulatory requirements. If you're interested, just contact me and I'd love to help you understand that language, but it is very much still in effect um, and has not changed yet. We still need your help with naming our new health center. 
So as you know, project 2.2, the renovation from the Meadows building, our former assisted living operation, they're located on the northeast side of our campus. Uh, it is being renovated to our new health center space. So the three-story building needs your help with a new name. Uh, we'd love to be something creative, um, anything but the health center. So put some good thought. I know there's a lot of creativity uh, lingering out there, especially in these days where it's cold and you need something to do. Jot down some names and um, send those in through the COVID uh, email line or call them into the front desk. We're compiling a list and I, I venture to guess there'll be a vote here in the near future as our project is scheduled to finish up here in summer of 2021. So exciting things. Lastly, the Waterford Place. So our last active COVID case in the Waterford Place was December 26th. Oh, it seems so long ago, which is exciting. Um, that was our last resident case. Our last associate case uh, was January 11th. So we are more than a month out. Again, I'll knock on some wood for good luck. Um, we continue to test both our health center and our assisted living three times weekly. Uh, it is only required to be uh, testing those two groups twice weekly. So we are continuing to exceed the requirements set forth by the Ohio Department of Health um, just for a good monitoring measure. And again, we're, we are always revisiting uh, and reviewing that cadence, but we continue to test in garage 33 and 34 and we're, we're on a roll. Um, and we do have a large amount of our staff that received their vaccination and are working towards their full immunity date as well. We did resume indoor visitation today in our Waterford Place as well as our health center. So in our health center, we are meeting in our activities south portion of the room. You'd enter through the south gate. In our Waterford Place, we're meeting in our west uh, living room on the first floor of Waterford Place, entering through the main entrance. And if you're looking to visit, rekindle an old friendship, visit a loved one, you would just use that Thrive Act um, app. It's the same as the application you're using uh, to schedule your visits in independent living. So pretty easy. It's all condensed into one system and you just have to pick the resident and the place you're looking to visit. And we highly encourage it. As we all know, that meaningful engagement is so important uh, for well-being. So we look forward to seeing you in the future. I just want to put a general reminder out there, um, last but not least, if you're just looking for information, inquiry, you're interested in uh, possible transition planning to a higher level of care, uh, you know, it's the time to plan uh, and it all starts with some information seeking, then please don't hesitate to reach out. I can be a good liaison for information. If you're looking for a brochure or a good conversation about assisted living, the Waterford um, is a great place to start. And I know it's hard because you can't walk through the building right now. We hope soon, but we've got a lot of good materials that can give you um, a, an opportunity to envision what life looks like there, whether it's for you or a loved one. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And thanks for having me. I look forward to joining you next month. My name is Pamela Collins. I'm Environmental Support Services IL Supervisor. And I have the wonderful privilege of once again um, honoring one of my associates. Last month it was Marva Jackson, and today I'm going to honor Sherry Nellis for the award of, proudly presenting her the award of the Associate of the Month. This is the second time we've had this opportunity to do this, and both times it's been one of Environmental Support Services Associates. She's an extraordinary, outstanding associate, and I am very, very pleased and proud to have her as part of our department. So Sherry, I want to honor you with this award. Thank you. Today, you will also be mentioned on a plaque in our hallway. You will have a, a button that will be presented to you, and you can wear it at your leisure. And a free parking space is close to wherever you choose to have it at, <laughs> okay, as you. well as a, a monetary reward. So thank you so much for being a part of our team. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>
I have a, uh, a really good update um, about one of the initiatives we have uh, just launched here at Friendship Village of Dublin. So um, I'm going to be talking about our new stakeholder, stakeholder satisfaction platform. So um, as most of our residents are aware, we typically do a uh, resident satisfaction survey every two years and we partner with Holleran to complete that comprehensive resident satisfaction survey. Uh, we are going to continue to do this. So this is just an extra layer we're adding to that um, satisfaction survey. So we have uh, partnered with um, NRC Health, which is the National Research Corporation, for really a real-time customer satisfaction uh, platform. So um, what really uh, made us to, to decide to go in this direction is we really were, were wanting more real-time and continuous feedback from our stakeholders, which, which are our residents, our families, our associates. Um, this new platform allows us to get real-time feedback from residents and family members on their own device through text, email, or phone call. And how this is set up is, is it's an automated process. So we, um, NRC has integrated with our medical record point-click care or electronic medical record point-click care platform. And everything is automated through really um, the timestamp uh, in point-click care. So what this uh, really will also provide us as well is, is we'll really have some really good benchmarks um, industry-wide for senior living and hospi hospitality-based uh, comp competition. So it allows us to really gauge our results of satisfaction at a, a local, a state, and a national level against other senior living communities and also other hospitality-based industries. So what to expect? So we're gonna focus specifically on our IL resident anniversary. So on, your, on or about your resident, your IL um, move-in date anniversary, you should receive a phone call. And that'll be a phone call with a quick um, 10 to 12 question survey. And uh, really uh, going back to the automation piece of it, that date is coming out of point click care. Um, I'll use myself as an example. If I moved in here February 1st of 2021, around February 1st of 2022, um, the system will push out an automated survey to me to basically uh, gauge some real time feedback satisfaction information. So you can kind of see the diet, uh, the box to, to your right there, that's the method with which you should uh, receive these surveys. So the first two attempts will be a phone call and the call window is from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So if I miss my first phone call, uh, don't worry, the system will try to call you uh, within 24 hours after that. And then if you miss that phone call as well, um, it'll prompt to send an email to, to fill out the satisfaction survey. So just to give everybody an idea of what kind of questions uh, to expect from your IL resident anniversary survey, um, we've listed a few of them here. And the goal is to really get a comprehensive look at all of our services. And, and um, we strategically pick these questions to gear around our services we offer. And there's also an opportunity to leave comments, um, which will be analyzed as well and broken down to um, specific department levels. So um, are your concerns addressed in a timely manner? Are you treated with courtesy and respect? Do activities, services, and programs support your health and well-being? Is the dining experience enjoyable? Do you feel that your room and living areas are clean and well-maintained? Are you kept informed about the services available to you? How likely would you uh, be to recommend this facility to your family and friends. Overall, how satisfied are you with Friendship Village of Dublin as a place to live? And what else would you like to say about your experience? And again, that will um, give an opportunity to uh, leave comments that are analyzed by the platform. This platform with NRC also allows us to gauge real-time feedback across all of our uh, levels of care on our campus. So I just wanted to give some examples of some other types of surveys that we'll be um, sending out to residents, families, and associates. 
Um, so for move-in surveys, for the IL residents, so if a new resident moves in, they will get a survey 30 days later um, specific to their move-in experience and how their first 30 days are going. Uh, for AL, for our Waterford um, Place facility, resident and families will be sent um, move-in surveys seven days after they move in. So we feel that's a good, a week's a good time to, to gauge that uh, that experience and then receive that feedback from both resident and families. And then for the health center, we'll have specific surveys that are, go out to the resident and families at 72 hours after they admit to our health center. Um, we also are gonna do anniversary surveys. Uh, we talked about the IL resident, um, but for we're also gonna do anniversary surveys for the resident and, and families for both the health center and assisted living. Um, we also have move out surveys, so that'll be for resident and families for the health center and assisted living, which is our Waterford Place, and then for the IL residents. So as you can see, we're trying to get more comprehensive customer satisfaction feedback and how we incorporate that into our continuous improvement planning um, is, is going to help us learn in real time and, and, and shift our operations um, accordingly. So the platform recently went live. If you receive a call or an email, we want your, your valuable feedback. Um, so if you see something from NRC Health, if you get a phone call, an email, um, please know that's coming from Friendship Village of Dublin. And uh, really that feedback is so valuable. And we're, we're, we're just launching this right now. It's gonna take a few months to build up a good database of, of feedback. Um, and we really need your help to, to get uh, your feedback. So um, please, please, please participate in those surveys if you receive them. Um, and then once we build up our database and we start to learn how we can analyze our, our customer feedback, uh, we, like I said, are gonna incorporate that um, into our quality assurance performance improvement programs across our campus. And really it's just a continuous uh, review of ways that we can continuously improve our operations and, and better serve our residents. So. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And that is my update for today. Thank you all. So I don't have a whole bunch to report today um, as we conclude February's town hall because there's such with such a great agenda today. I did just want to uh, talk real quick about what's happening with outside visitors. So now that we've all been vaccinated and we've all reached our immunity day, which yay, thank goodness. Um, we are still learning things every day. The CDC is changing their guidelines. We're learning about the immunization from Pfizer that we all received. We're also learning from the Ohio Department of Health. And so what we're finding is that really there's no additional research outside of within 90 days of receiving your vaccination. So as we learn more, of course, we will communicate with you and we will make some adjustments. But I know I'm hearing from all of you that you really wanna have your family members come into your apartment. We want that too, but at this point, we're just not there yet. So we have opened up indoor visitation. So if you want to have your family members come to a designated area, we have set those up. And again, we please, please, please make sure that you're still wearing your mask and you're socially distancing. So there are, there are no right answers on all of this. We're gonna look back and say, we did this well and we didn't do this well, and we're doing the best that we can with the information that we do have in front of us. So I know I've heard from a lot of you that it's not consistent and some part of me agrees with you on that, but this is what the CDC is saying, this is what the Ohio Department of Health is saying. We're trying to pull all that stuff together um, to make the, the guidelines moving forward. But I'm so happy to see many of you in the dining rooms. I know that um, the service is gonna be a little bit slower. We're, we're relearning how to do the new things in 2021. So we're gonna keep working at it for you. I hope that you know how much we want to, to serve you and we want you to, to be feel so excited and happy and feel really great about the services that you're being provided here. But it's gonna take some time. It's we're, we're re-pivoting the, the cruise ship that we're on, so to speak, 
Um, and so now we have the engine stop and we're trying to get the engines going in the right direction and get us steered um, in the direction that we want. So have, a, have patience with us. We really appreciate it. We're going to keep working really hard to try and improve every day. And I'm looking forward to 2021 and all the great things that are going to happen. So thank you.